I'm Steve Fry, President of the Inventors Council of Dayton. I'm here doing some uh, demos for Virtual Tech Fest 2021. The uh, topic for today is going to be Sterling Cycle Engines. I'm going to show you how they operate, give you a little bit of history on them. Uh, I've got some material I got out of my library. Um, introduction to Sterling Engines. Pretty good book. This is Sterling Cycle Engines by Andy Ross. That came with my Solar Engines Model 1 I got back in 1977. We'll see that operating later on. Um, <clears throat> this is a machine design from 2011. Sterling Cycle captures solar power. And you can see it's got the Sterling Cycle engine up here. There's a parabolic reflector. There's also some cooling lines. It's mounted on a helium set so it tracks the sun. It's a fairly efficient way of converting solar power to electricity, about 30 some percent efficiency. Going farther back in the archives, there's a popular science Sterling Cycle automobile engine. Um, back in the early 70s, we had an oil embargo. So we actually had oil shortages, gasoline shortages, and people were looking for alternative fuels and engines that could use alternative fuels and one of the engines investigated was a Sterling Cycle engine. There's a multi-cylinder uh, Sterling Cycle engine there. From Scientific American, July 1978. Alternative automobile engines goes into a number of different possible automobile engines and including turbines and, and uh, Sterling Cycle engines and of course the conventional gasoline and diesel engines compares their efficiencies and it says that the uh, Sterling Cycle engine has good component efficiencies and uh, very good efficiency relative to maximum thermodynamic efficiency so as a heat engine it's pretty efficient just a matter how hot you can operate it a uh, little bit of history on it from Andy's book it was invented in 1816 by the Reverend Robert Sterling, a Scottish minister. He's also a scientist, minister and scientist. Comes from a family of engineers. And uh, Sterling's patented, patent is entitled Improvements for Diminishing the Consumption of Fuel and in particular an engine capable of being applied to the moving machinery in a principle entirely new. The patent was primarily dealing with, with uh, an invention of his uh, called the economizer, which we now call the regenerator. And I'll explain that later on when we get into more details on how these operate. So let's go ahead and look into how these engines actually work. Well, this one is a... Um, American Sterling Company MM-5 kit Sterling engine. I'm not sure that they make them anymore, but uh, there's a lot of things like that that's available as kits or completely built. Um, now, the yellow thing going up and down is not the power piston. That's called a displacer. Air can go around the ends of it, so that just moves the air from one side to the other. The bottom side, which is on the heat plate, is the hot side in this case. It's at 120 degrees when it's on the heat plate. The top side's around 85 degrees, so it's running on about 35 degree temperature difference. Um, the diaphragm here going up and down is actually the power piston. So let's see how this actually works. So say we're in this mode right here. The air is now on the bottom where it's getting hot. As it gets hot, the pressure goes up. The gas expands and the pressure goes up. When it goes up, see what happens the diaphragm is pushed up by the pressure and the displacer moves down which forces the air to go to the cold side when the air goes to the cold side it cools down and as it cools down the pressure drops and it pulls the diaphragm back in so as that happens see what happens now the displacers moved back up the air's had to move back down to the hot side it's going to warm up as it warms up, the pressure goes up and it pushes the diaphragm up again. 
So it just continues that cycle, and that's how the thing operates. It's just moving the air back and forth between the hot side and the cold side, and it runs through that cycle on a continuous basis. This one here works on a similar basis. A little higher temperature. Uses alcohol in here with a, uh, a wick, and you light that. So the fire goes on this end. So that's the hot end. This is the displacer cylinder. The displacer is the piston inside here. So there's a piston inside there, but air can go around it. So when it's, say, in, uh, in this position here, the displacer cylinder is back here, which is forcing all the air, most of the air, to be on the hot side. So it gets hot, and the pressure goes up. As the pressure goes up, it pushes on the piston here, causes the piston to be pushed out. As it pushes out, see the displacers going in? As the displacer goes in, it forces the air to move to the cool side, where the fins are, and the air cools down and the pressure drops, and the piston comes back in. So it's following a very similar process, just at a little higher temperature level, and probably a little higher efficiency level, and a little higher power level. So I'll show you this thing here operating here um, right now. So, the story on the regenerator or economizer. As the air is going back and forth, it's going around the edge here and going with one side and the other side, and we're just taking hot air and throwing it on the cold side, which is going to tend to warm up the cold side some more. And we take the cold air and moves it to the warm side, which tend to cool down the, cool, the hot side. So, the idea of the regenerator is to force the air that's going between the two sides to go through something that kind of acts like a nose. It's got a a mesh in there or some metal pieces in there and as the cold air goes towards the hot side it cools down that mesh and also gets warmed up by the meshes being warmed by the hot air that went through before and then it goes to this side it gets heated up once again of course the pressure changes and does its normal thing but when it goes back the other way now you got hot air going through that mesh it heats up the mesh at the same time it's pre-cooling the air going to the cool side so that regenerator or economizer makes the engine even more efficient. Now there's a lot of different versions of these things. Um, getting into the efficiency issue, uh, NASA has been investigating Stirling cycle engines for quite a while and done some long-term tests on some modern versions of them. Thermocouple technology that we've used, the RTG technology we've used for a long time and worked very well on Voyagers and Vikings and Galileos and most all, all the deep space programs, New Horizons, any deep space thing that it really solar is not practical for. Um, those uh, thermoelectric thermocouples are only about 6% efficient, which means you have to generate an awful lot of heat and get rid of a lot of heat with your radiators to make a little bit of power, relatively speaking. The uh, Stirling cycle engine can do that a lot more efficiently, a lot higher efficiency level. Uh, the only issue is it's got moving parts. So they've discovered, they've been developing ways of having it so that the moving parts are designed so they last for a long time. And one of the latest things is, is that they've, they've been doing some tests at the NASA Glenn and um, long term test. And so they've been running these things for quite a number of years, over a decade and without any failures. So they're proving that the storing cycle engine can be used as a, a power system for space usage, using nuclear power, using solar power, whatever source of heat they can use on it. Um, most of those systems use what is called a, a uh, free piston Stirling cycle engine. So, um, someplace in my stack here. This is kind of a drawing of a typical modern one. This is where the displacer is. This is the hot end. This is the cold end. Gas in here, pressure is going to go up and down. It's going to work this part here, which oscillates back and forth. There's no crankshaft on the free piston Stirling cycle engine design. That goes back and forth, and this is an alternator, which generates electricity from it. 
So, uh, so this thing would be sitting at the hot source, and this would be sitting with some radiators or some liquid cooling going to it to provide the cool part. So there's a uh, the Stirling cycle engine has been around for a while. It's it's an engine from the past, but looking at what's going on with it nowadays, it's definitely a engine and power source for the future.